Alright guys, welcome to Next Gen Rugger. So we continue in our All-Star Fantasy Draft. Uh, this time we land on the South Coast Kings, which obviously incorporates the Eastern Province border and Southwestern Districts regions. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as bell notification. And as soon as new videos are released, you will be the first to know. So let's head straight into it, no time to waste. We start off with Lucid Prop, Oscar Mayataza from Hudson Park. Very classy player, hard as nails. Uh, definitely would have wanted to make a push for the SA Schools team this year. And um, played first team last year, was part of the EPD squad and uh, has a whole bunch of talent. And can't wait to see how his career progresses. No news yet on his future. Hooker, we have Jordan McLaughlin from Selborne, and there's something special about that Selborne number two jersey, especially when you consider that Jacques Horsen just left, and this guy's a powerhouse. Um, you can probably find his highlights somewhere on Instagram. Uh, look at Derek highlights, for example, and you can see that this guy just loves the physical side of the game. And like Horsen, he will be going to the Sharks next year, and uh, definitely will be challenging for a place uh, there in the future. Jordan's definitely got a bright future in the game, very powerful youngster. Uh, very humble and, uh, you know, really down to earth and very much got a high work rate. And uh, really, we can't wait to see how far he goes in the game. No doubt it will be far. Then we move on to tight head prop, Luka Niso Bormela. Uh, he's currently at St. Andrews College. Very, very strong scrummer. Uh, very mobile around the field. Um, definitely got a bright future in the game as well. And uh, definitely can't wait to see how he develops and where he's going to take his career in the future. Then our first lock, we have Cornet Rall from Oakdale. Now, Cornet is one of the best locks in the country. Um, <clears throat> he, he made a big impression on us last year, seeing him play. And in our opinion, no doubt he would have made SA schools this year. He's definitely one of the lead level locks. Uh, still no news on where he's going to be uh, continue his playing career next year, but whoever does get him is going to be very, very lucky. They're going to be getting a top draw player and uh, someone that's got a very, very big future ahead of him. His lock partner would have been, in our opinion, Mateus Lowe. Now, Mateus is from Nico Milan, originally from the Greekwest region. He actually started off playing it's like C and D team rugby and eventually worked his way up the ranks and uh, we've been told by people in the know that he would have been selected for the Eastern Province Craven Week squad this year. So that just goes to show you how much you can achieve if you've got a high work rate. And Mateus is one of those guys with a very, very high work rate. Um, no idea yet on his future, but from what we understand there, a lot of the top unions are knocking on his door. And um, like Cornet, uh, a very, very talented prospect, and we're definitely looking forward to seeing him flourish in the future. Then at blindside flank, we have Josh van Frieden. Now, we've spoken about Josh a lot in this channel, and obviously for good reason. Uh, one of the top young prospects in the country. Um, he was the Salborn captain for this year, showed extraordinary leadership. Definitely would have made SA schools. Definitely would have been part of the SA school squad. And um, Salborn looked very promising this year. And I think under Josh, Josh's leadership, that probably would have gone very far. And uh, this was one of those uh, one of those votes that really, really wasn't that close at all, guys. I mean, I think the community definitely agrees with us. And then open side flank, which was a tight vote, but finally it went to a player that probably really does deserve it. Someone that's been flying under the radar, someone that's very underrated, and that's Lati John Dwana. So he's from Graham College, and he wasn't, you know, it's, it's hard to keep track of everyone. He wasn't really on the radar. And we saw him play at Graham Rugby Day, and it was clear that this guy's got some talent. He's a very special player. Uh, I'm not too sure about his future yet either, so we'll see where he ends up. But um, no, no doubt he can go very far in the game. He's got the talent. He's got the work rate. And uh, I think he definitely would have been pushing for Craven weak spot this year if he continued uh, the momentum that he gained from those first couple of games that he played. Then at eighth man, we have Damon Royal from Gray High School. This guy was in high demand guys um, in terms of all the unions finally settled on playing for the kings uh, he'll be continuing his rugby career there next year uh, local boys staying local which we like to see and uh, yeah he was part of the first team squad last year showed some promise um, obviously gray were upset by um, uh, they, they were upset in their first fixture um, against Brandwach. 
um, this year. It was quite a big upset, but still he made a good account of himself and uh, no doubt he is a player who stars on the rise, so we definitely look forward to seeing how he develops as well. And then a scrum off, very tight vote as well, but it went to St. John Broad from uh, St. Andrews. Very, very creative young player. This, um, you know, doesn't stick to the sort of traditional games. I've watched quite a bit of his footage, um, you know, because some other guys have basically told me I should keep an eye on him. And def he's, he's a bit of an enigma. Um, you know, he, uh, he doesn't play within the traditional structures of the game. Very, very creative player. Um, a lot of uh, speed, likes to open up play. Um, highly intelligent, very high rugby IQ. And, uh, you know, I think he would have made a massive impression for St. Uh, St Andrews this year in his grade 12 year. And I think he I think he would have walked into the EP squad in terms of Craven Week this year. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, very talented youngster. Another one we don't know much about what he's going to be doing in the future. But uh, wherever he goes, I think he's got a bright future. Because especially, you know, as he grows a bit old, he's going to fill out more. And, um, you know, he's going to combine all, all of that talent, that natural talent that he's got. And uh, I think that he'll go far in the game if he chooses to stay in the game of rugby. Then fly off, a very, very tight vote here. Um, but ultimately it went to Sialalo Benge from Queens. And how funny is it that I'm not, not like not two days ago was I talking about this guy. Exceptional fly off. Um, you know, what? one of the most talented, naturally talented players I've seen from that region in a very long time. Um and he's, I mean, he's got all the weapons. He's uh, tactical kickings there, uh, kicking for goals there, uh, speed, line breaks. Uh, he's just got all the weaponry uh, to succeed. Now, he's going to be going to the Lions. I've talked about it in the last video if you want more detail on that. But I think there's a very clear path for him to be playing Super Rugby in the next couple of years, in my opinion. Next up, we have at left wing, Tino Singer from Oakdale. This guy's got speed and he loves the game. He plays the game with an absolute passion. And he's... You know he's very hard to ta uh, very hard to tackle, very hard to keep down, and uh, he also loves the physical side of the game as well. Which you know, it's, he's he's just a fantastic player to watch, very entertaining player to watch. Um, another one we don't know where his next move is going to be, but um, you know whoever gets this guy's going to be very lucky because I, I I I don't know him personally or anything like that, but I just get the feeling that he's um, he has a very positive influence on the team. Um, and I think that he's one of those guys that can sort of lift up a dressing room and uh, he doesn't give up. Uh, just I've, I watched a lot of his footage. I mean, he's a really, really talented player and uh, really looking forward to seeing him just grow in the future. I think he can go very far. Then we go to inside centre, Brandon Wilkie. Just what a player this guy is. I'm sure there were so many schools knocking on his door to move, but he chose to stay at Framsby. Um, he's going to be moving to the Sharks as well. And now... You know, he can play He can play at uh, Flaff, he can play at centre. I don't think he'd be out of place at uh, fullback either. So he's very much one of those utility players. And I think going to the Sharks, he's going to have a lot of competition. And what will end up happening is that uh, he'll he'll eventually find his place in the side. He'll, he'll know where to settle. And, uh, you know, just brilliant hands. I, I, I can't talk enough about this guy's handling and his speed off the mark. Uh, another guy that I've watched a lot of and uh, very, very special player. Definitely will develop very well at the Sharks. I um, think they're very lucky to be getting him. Then we have the outside centre, Josh Jonas from Hudson Park. Another player, very, very high demand. Uh, he's been going to be moving to the Lions. Um, I'll be speaking in a lot more detail about Josh um, on another video. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Hudson were looking good this year. Um, they only lost that game to Selborne by one point. And Josh is a phenomenal athlete. I mean, he was, he was like I said, he was in hard demand this year in terms of the unions. Uh, but his agency obviously sent him to the Lions because that was the clearest pathway. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've just got a feeling, my personal feeling is that we're probably going to see him on the seventh circuit sooner than uh, rather than later. I think they'll snap him up. Um, but no doubt, he's, he's got a very big future in the 15-man game. Um just very creative, breaks the line, good on defence. Uh, I just think he's, an, he's a five-star recruit in my opinion. So I think the Lions made a very good signing over here. Then right wing, another guy spoken a lot about Saviwe Sondani from Grey High School. I mean, there's, there's not much more I can say to you guys. Go look at his footage. Th this guy just scores tries for fun. Am amazing stepping, searing pace. Um, 
also, you know, he's not the biggest guy that you'll see, but he doesn't give a damn. He, you'll, you'll tackle guys twice his size off the park. Uh, very, very strong, deceptively strong, deceptively fast. I mean, that, that's a way I could actually describe his all-round play, just deceptive. And um, I think he's going to flourish at the Sharks as well. I mean, the Sharks are attracting some top prospects, and uh, I think he's going to flourish there. And uh, definitely can't wait to see how he develops. The whole thing as well, he's also someone that can play multiple positions. But for me personally, I definitely think he's a wing. I think he can. he's going to cause havoc in the wing in the future. And uh, definitely look forward to seeing more of him. Then our final position, which was probably the tightest vote. Uh, this was two votes, literally. And uh, that went to probably the best young athlete in the country right now. Now, why do I say that? Let me describe this kid. His name is Dwayne Farrow, okay, and I chatted to him to confirm everything because when people told me about him, I was like, I call BS on this. This, this can't be. I've never heard of anything like this. Okay, so where do we start? EP hockey, check. EP cricket, check. EP rugby, check. Runs 100 meters in 10.33 or 10.31 or whatever it is. I, I, I don't know. Second fastest kid in his age group in the country. We're talking ridiculous amounts of talent over here and I think everyone in the country would be talking about him right now um, if he were at one of the big schools and no disrespect to his school Kingswood they've got a they've got a great tradition over there um, and also what I like about Kingswood is that they, they take on all comers you know it's I don't think they've got many boys I think they've got 200 250 boys over there it's okay that's a co-ed school but they take on all comers they, they play a lot of the top schools and um they're definitely one of those schools that punches way above their weight. Um, you know, they they got their derby against St. Andrews every year, um, and they've done quite well this decade. Um, and they've they've produced some they've produced some talented players. I mean, I think Speckman's from there. Uh, Fabian Juries, if you can remember that far back, he's from there. So you know, I'm I'm not trying to disrespect them when I'm saying that. I'm just saying that if he was at Paul Boys, Great College, Paul Jim, Porus you know, even Bishop's one of those schools, I think everyone would know about him. But, you know, from what I gather with this guy, he just prefers to let his, uh, his talent do the talking, and boy has it done some talking, because I've been watching some footage on him on DigiTV, you know, from his younger days as well, and wow, 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 this guy's something special. He's got so many options available to him, though, you know what I mean? When you've got that amount of athletic talent, well, what do you do with it? So, my hope and my dream would be for him to stay in rugby because I think the day that he leaves school, he could walk into the South African Sevens team and become a Sevens superstar. I think he does two or three years in the Sevens circuit, moves straight over to Super Rugby because that's the level of his talent. And uh, who knows, high honors from there. I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying to you guys essentially is like he could become a, he could become a Springbok. I really do believe that. I really, really do believe that. And uh, that's a question. I mean, do you take a a track, you know, what is a track and field a athletic scholarship from the States, or do you stay in uh, South Africa and do your rugby thing? I, I don't know, but geez, I mean, think about it, guys. The second fastest kid in the country, EP at three different sporting codes, and all this done at a school that's not seen as like one of your big powerhouses. Just very undercover, flying under the radar, but after this video, I think uh, I, th I think a few people will be contacting him because... Uh, yeah, we're talking about a very special athlete here. And, you know, like I said, this was a tight vote, two votes in it. Um, but what am I even saying? What's scarier than this is in grade 11. Okay, so we still got another year left. So we're going to see him properly unleashed next year. And this is something to look forward to, guys. Think about that. Next year in matric, we're going to see him. And think about the difference in, uh, in performance and development from grade 11 to grade 12. You think I'm talking rubbish? Compare Jan Hendrik Vessel's grade 11 to grade 12. It was it was amazing. And uh, this is what will happen with him as well. So obviously he's lost out on a bit of rugby uh, this year. But next year, just trust me, remember this name because uh, he's going to be on everyone's lips next year. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Um, the Half Fault Lions voting is now open. So head over to www.nextgenrugged.com and uh, get voting. And that video will be released next Friday. Monday, we will be releasing the uh, Shocks uh, nominations. So you can basically nominate your, uh, your, 
your favorite player from uh, the Sharks, which will be, you know, the Natal Sharks as well as the Pumas region. So to, it's going to be called the Eastern Sharks. We don't want Saru suing us. So it's going to be called the Eastern Sharks and will compromise of players from the Natal area and uh, the Mpumalanga Pumas area. So that will be released on Monday. And uh, besides that, have a fantastic week further. Cheers. Bye. Thank you.